Another use for photoresistors, um, besides controlling the pitch of oscillators and clock circuits, is turning on and off any form of analog audio sound that you might put through it. Uh, to do this experiment, we need a sound source. In this case, I have an old CD player here and a little amplifier. Amplifier has a jack into it with the usual ground and tip connection. I'm going to connect the ground between the plug on the amp and a plug stuck into the headphone jack of my CD player. And here's the tip, but I'm going to connect it not directly to that uh, plug on the CD player, but I'm going to make a second um, the second clip lead going to there so that I can tap these together and hopefully you'll hear something. Okay? So the music comes through when these two connect. Now, instead of clicking them together, I'm going to put the photoresistor between the two. And... You'll notice when it's darker, the signal gets quieter, all right? Never goes completely off, okay? If we want it to go completely off, we need to add a resistor between the tip and the shield at the amplifier, a resistor of about 10K. And we're just going to take this one, put it between two leads, clip it in here, it acts as a clamp, so that now the dynamic range is greater. Okay, so we have what we might call a mitten-controlled audio attenuator. Not terribly interesting, but let's um, bury it a little bit in here. And now you'll notice that when the flashlight goes over it, we can make it, whoops, lost my connection, warble on and off. In this way, the photocell can be used as a light sensitive audio volume and switching control performed by a flashlight. On the other hand, if we bring in a small circuit, we can automate that audio switching function. Now, here we have our basic 74C14 oscillator, the one we were making sounds with a little while ago. If we listen to it, you will notice that it's running at a relatively low frequency. I've set it up with a pot and a large capacitor. And it goes from sort of a motorboat sound down to a low frequency clicking. Now, what I can do here is instead of listening to this sound, I can use the square wave to turn on and off an LED, a light emitting diode. This is a very efficient form of light that can be controlled by an electronic signal. I put it in the board so that the short leg of the LED is in ground and the long leg is on some strip that isn't being used for anything else. And then I take a 1K resistor and I connect it between the LED free leg and the output of the oscillator. And now you'll notice that the LED blinks at the frequency of the click. Now, I'm going to disconnect our audio from there, and I'm going to connect it again to our CD. Get this going over to the CD. All right. But now, instead of using the ambient light and my hand to control this, I'm going to tape it on to the LED. And you'll notice 
that the music is turning on and off at the same rhythm that the LED was going at. I can make it go faster. Until it sounds like a kind of a tremolo, uh, vibrato, almost vibrato sound. Or I'll make it slower. So it becomes more rhythmic. say, it doesn't have a perfect shutoff at the end, but as a modulation effect, it's very strong. It's extremely clean sound. There's no active components in the signal line. And um, you can make yourself a very beautiful guitar tremolo pedal using just this circuit.